All right, here we go, folks. <laughs> okay, guys, you should get your Bibles out, get eSword, whatever you want to get out, but, you know, get your Bible, and because I want, I want you to go to your Bible. This is super important stuff. You should see this for yourselves. I'm going to pull it up in front of you, and everybody should go themselves and look at it themselves. This is staggering. Okay. So here we go. Let's let's start with we're going to start with what a hendecagram is in any class you go to whether or not it's physics, calculus, whatever the class is. If the teacher's talking about a particular uh subject and he's saying, "Hey, let's talk about this polynomial." And you don't know what a polynomial is and you're like, "Well, what's he talking about?" then you're at a severe disadvantage because you don't even know the definition of the word that he's talking about. You know, if he says, hey, let's talk about trapezoids right now. And you're like, trapezoid? What's a trapezoid? So you need a clear-cut definition for everything you're going to be talking about. So let's start with a couple definitions because I'm going to give you the definitions of the things that we're going to be using during this video and then I'm going to go back, I'm going to give you the definitions and I'm going to go back to the beginning of the data and we're going to start going through it. And as we go through it, we're going to land on those definitions I gave you at the beginning. And then you're going to apply those definitions and just wait, watch this unfold. This, guys, I'm telling you, this is to me on a personal level, this is one of the greatest gifts I could ever have gotten myself from the Lord ever. I'm just like, the understanding of this is so phenomenal. It'll, it'll prove to you, you're going to know by the end of this video that the host body system is nothing more than a medium that was used to transmutate an angel to food for another race of beings. It was a way to capture angels and to get them transmuted into something else. And I'm going to show you exactly how that plays out. And I'm going to give you uh, physical representations of all of it because it's all been in front of our face this whole time. We just never, nobody really knew it. You know what? Let's just talk for a sec. How many people ever really knew what the poem for the Statue of Liberty was? I didn't know that until, you know, maybe in the last year. I never really read the poem and paid any attention to it. I didn't pay any attention to it till the Lord led me to it. And the Lord told me to look up what an 11-pointed star was. I mean, pfft. I was like, Statue of Liberty, okay, it's the Statue of Liberty. Did you ever dissect the Statue of Liberty? Did you ever look, like, why is it on an 11-pointed star? What is an 11-pointed star? It's a hendecagram. A hendecagram is used in Jewish cosmology. It's called a kelepot. A kelepot is called a peel shell or husk, like a human body. And, you know, no one took the time to go through all these steps. But the Lord led me through every step. Watch where this goes. Okay, let's do it. Let's just do it. Let's go. Okay, so here's the here's the Statue of Liberty right here. See it right here? Star-shaped walls become the base of the Statue of Liberty. Okay, but they didn't tell you that this is used in the occult. They they forgot to mention that this is really, this is a kelepot. It's what's called the Citra Akra, which you're going to see. So let's look at what, see, a hendecagram. There's a hendecagram. Okay, in geometry, a hendecagram is a star polygon that has, look, 11 vertices. So you look over here. I, I want to I wanna show you something about a hendecagram. If you go, we're going to use this one because we're going to be seeing this one a lot. It's an 11-pointed star. Look at 12 o'clock. Like, if, pretend this is a clock. You know what? Let me do this. Like, let's say this is a clock and this is the 12 o'clock point right well there's one there's one point here but if you go straight down to six o'clock there's there's not a point there's two points but in between these points these two this point and this one from here to 12 o'clock there's one two three four one, two, three, four. So on one end of the hendecagram, you have a singular point, And on the other end, you have a double point. Let me tell you something. Understanding the significance of that is going to blow your mind. 
It's it, it literally has to do with our our existence and what we become. It has to do with the Twin Towers becoming the One World Freedom Tower. There's two points on one side of the hindecagram, but if you turn it upside down, there's one point. And that's, that's it's going to blow your mind. You know what? I don't want to get ahead of myself, so just pay attention. Mr. Batcat's all over me. What's up, Batcat? <laughs> He's in the mood. All right, so here we go. Let me stretch this down. So now I've shown you, look, read it. A hindecagram is... A star polygon, which is right here. There's a star polygon that has 11 vertices. That's what a hindecagram is. Let me take Mr. Bat Cat. Okay, you got to go over there, buddy. Okay. He's in a mood. He wants to fight. Hang on, guys. Take that. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, star polygon. There is a star polygon, and it has 11 vertices. And even on the Hindecagram page right here, see, we have the Statue of Liberty because they're like, see, the Statue of Liberty is on 11-pointed star. The Topaki Scroll contains an 11-pointed star, uh, Gira, um, uh, form used in Islamic art. So this is a very popular... Uh, image in Islamic art. Okay, I'm not going to go down that that um, rabbit trail, but trust me, when you go into Islamic art and Islamic architecture, the hindecagram is pervasive. It's everywhere, which is a whole nother video. It's mind-boggling. So here we go. Let's watch. Okay, so we have the Statue of Liberty on top of a hindecagram. A hindecagram is a kelepot. Okay, so uh, the hindecagram is what's called a kelepot, and it is it is part. You know, it is what's considered the tree of life. But remember, Jesus said, "Arise, O sleeper, wake up from the dead, and Christ will give you light." So we're literally all the walking dead. Jesus said, "Let the dead." bury their own let the dead bury their own dead because he had called the people to come follow him and one guy said well you know i got oxen i got to try out which is fascinating because when you put a yoke on oxen it makes a double u and so then the other guy said well i've got to go bury my dad and he said let the dead bury their own dead that's kind of harsh don't you think i mean hey i got to go bury my dad he says let the dead bury their own it was to make a point everybody's dead. We're, we're walking around in host bodies, and your host body is your death. Watch. Here we go. Let's get into it. Okay, so the Kelepot, uh, and it's spelled, it's spelled Q-L-I-P-H-O-T-H, or here's a good way to understand how to say it, Kelepot. Okay, Hebrew, and here's the Hebrew word for it. Um, Literally, here we go, peels, shells, or husks. Okay, now, this is rep a representation of the human body, and we're going we're gonna to go through all that. So, the word kelepot, an 11-pointed star, a, a hindecagram, is a kelepot, which is a peel, shell, or husk. It's from the singular kilopa, which means husk, are a representation of evil or impure forces in Jewish mysticism, okay? The, they are polar opposites. They are polar opposites of the holy sephirot, okay? And when you go and you, you look and you read about this, it's, it's the holiness of God. Now look, the realm of evil, this, the realm of evil is also termed citra akra, okay? Now don't forget, Right now, we are taking hold of the definitions. This is going to blow your mind. Okay, so the, the 11 pointed star is called a hindecagram. A hindecagram is a kelepot. A kelepot represents a, a peel, a husk, or a shell, you know, like our body. Remember the movie Ghost in a Shell? Okay, here we go. Let's see. 
Okay, and they are, and the realm of evil is also termed Sitra Akra, Aramaic, the, and it means the other side, opposite holiness. Okay, so let's make sure we all understand this. The Kelepot, which is a hindecogram, the Kelepot right there, which is a hindecogram. It means a peel shell or a husk, and it is a representation of evil or impure spiritual forces, the polar opposite of the Holy Sephirot. And the realm of evil is also termed Sitra Akra. So the realm of evil associated with the Hindecogram or the Kelepot is called the Sitra Akra, and it means the other side opposite holiness. So. Let's make sure we understand this. An 11-pointed star is called a hindecogram. It's also called a kelepot. And it is a peel shell or a husk, representing like your body, which is a shell. And it is inherently evil. It is inherently evil. And it is a representation of impure spiritual forces and it is the opposite of the Holy Sephirot. The realm of East, this realm of evil is termed Sitra Akra, and it, in, in Aramaic, right here, from Aramaic, the other side, opposite holiness. Okay, so that's what the Hindecogram is. That's what the star that the Statue of Liberty is standing upon. Now, remember, I showed you, again, I didn't, Statue of Liberty used to mean nothing to me. Now it's like, wow. The Statue of Liberty is called the Mother of Exiles. It represents Eve because she birthed out all the exiles that come on this planet. Uh, all the angels that got exiled to this planet get birthed out. It says Eve is the mother of all the living uh, children of men. So this system that we're in, we're all in kelepots. We're all in host body shells, peel or husk. We're all in a shell and we're all surrounding. We're all in a shell that had holiness in it, but it's being transmuted to something else because the shell itself is inherently evil, which is the host body. Okay, now, now that we have our definitions, let's start doing this. Okay, now, Genesis 1, very extremely fast extremely fast um, recapitulation. Y'all need this to move on very quickly. We're going to do it very quickly. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, in order to help people on a conceptual level, let me do that now. Let's do the conceptual level now. Okay. If I have my truck and I'm going to drive my truck down the street and I have one of my children that's, let's say, an eighth grader and I want to let him drive my truck and I let him sit on my lap, hold the steering wheel, put their feet on the pedal and I go, OK, let's go. Well, I'm sitting there with my hand on the wheel. They've got their hands on the wheel. They're driving the truck. They're pressing the pedals. But who's really in control of the truck? Well, I am, because if I say, oh, no, I wanted the truck to go this way, then I take over and I steer where the truck where I want the truck to go. So I want you to keep that on a conceptual level with the Lord God as opposed to Elohim. There is a difference, and I'm going to show you, and I'm going to prove it using Ezekiel, using Isaiah 14. Because when when Lucifer said, I will ascend above the stars of God, the word for God is Hebrew word 410. You know what? Let's do it right now. We'll, we'll kind of do it in a backwards motion. I think uh, I'm just being led to do it that way. Watch. Let's do it in a backwards motion. We'll start with Isaiah first. Okay. Isaiah 14. How art thou fallen from heaven? Okay, look. Two fall, cast down, two cast out. From heaven, O Lucifer. It means the sense of brightness, morning star, to shine, to boast. Okay, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, morning star, uh, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? 
For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Look at this. Stars, it means in the sense of blazing. Now, don't forget, all God's angels are messengers of flaming fire. Remember that. God's angels, it says, are messengers of flaming fire. Okay, and here we go. Watch. I will... I will set exalt my throne above the stars. It means in the sense of blazing, as round or shining, a prince. He's not talking about, you know, a star that, you know, like a burning ball of, you know, of uh, flames like our sun. It's a prince. And who's to know whether or not those are them? A prince. There it is. A prince. I will set my throne above the stars of, look at the word God here. This is huge. Look at that number right there. This is huge. I will, so Lucifer said, I will exalt my throne above the stars in the sense of blazing, the princes of God. It is Hebrew word, 410. Look at the name. L, E-L. Okay, look. L. It means mighty, especially the almighty God. See, the almighty God. So Lucifer saying, I will exalt my throne above the angels, the princes of the almighty God. That's what he's saying. Okay, now watch this. Just to seal the deal. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the, look, the most high, Elyon. Do you know where y'all have seen that before, don't you? Let's go to Psalm 82. Jesus said in John 10, Do not your own scriptures say you are gods. And if the word of God came unto them that are called gods, and the scriptures cannot be broken. That's what Jesus said. You are gods. You are all children of the Most High. That's what he said. Here it is. Psalm 82. Watch. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Here it is, look. I have said, there it is. I have said, ye are gods, right there. So Jesus quoted that from John 10. So I have said, ye are gods. Look what the word is. It's Elohim, Hebrew word 430. And look, all of you are children of who? Of who? Of the Most High. I'm going to make that all yellow. So right here in Psalm 82, which Jesus quoted in John 10, I've shown it to you, I've already shown you. Jesus said, your own scriptures say you are gods, and the scriptures cannot be broken. He was quoting Psalm 82. So here it is, watch. I have said, you are gods, just exactly what Jesus said in John 10. And all of you are children of the Most High, Elyon. There it is again. So see, we're all children of Elyon, but, see, remember that, that big but right there? But you shall die like men. Same word as the Garden of Eden, Adam. Same word as Genesis 1, let us make man in our vain show. You shall die like men. It means a human being, hypocrite, and you shall fall. Look, to fall, cast down, cast out. It's the same word as Lucifer in Isaiah, uh, in Isaiah 14. And you shall fall like one of the princes. There it is. Captains, masters that had rule, past tense. Okay, so here we go. Let's go back. Isaiah 14. Prove it out. Here we go. You said I will exalt my heart, I will exalt my throne above the stars, the princes of look. It is not Elohim. It is El. And then I will ascend above the heights. I will be like the most high alien. There it is. So no one can argue this, no matter what. Elohim is not El. Elohim is not El Alien. The Most High God. Now these are a cumulative sum of angels that are being led by it within an insurrection. Here we go. Genesis 1. 
Ready? So, and the earth was without form void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit, the ruach, it means wind by re resemblance breath, uh, violent exhalation, and the spirit of God, look, Elohim. Elohim, gods of the supreme God. It is not the supreme God, angels and magistrates. I'm going to highlight that a different color. So, there you go. So, and the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face right here as the part that turns the face of the waters semen right there. Okay, let me show you an altar right now again. So let's look at an altar that has that. So here is a big dead sheep. There is a there is a big image of a dead sheep. That it, total image of that dead sheep, when you look at it from above, is a penis ejaculating a seed into a vagina. And all we have to do is turn the altar upside down. The Bible says, those who try and hide their plans from the Lord are doomed. They carry out their schemes in secret and think no one will see them or know what they are doing. They turn everything upside down. For some reason, this thing's having a problem buffering. Here we go. Okay, so here we go. That is a penis. There's the opening to the penis in white. It's shooting the seed into this opening. And here's a bunch of semen running down the side of this altar. And these are all angels. Angels are Elohim, gods angels, magistrates. So what you're looking at right there is an entire altar that's a giant dead sheep made up of Elohim moving over the spirit, moving over the semen. So the spirit, the Ruach Elohim, you're looking at it right there, moved over the semen. Why do you think a bunch of angels, gods, magistrates are melting into semen? Give me a break. I mean, what a freaky altar to do. Unless it's the truth. Now it makes sense. Well, why wouldn't you build an altar to glorify your kingdom if that's what how you got your kingdom going? Of course it makes sense now. Because that altar of a bunch of God's angels, magistrates, uh, moving over the, the semen, that's Genesis 1 verse 2. In a big altar, look, there's a bunch of angels, God's magistrates, the spirit of them, because angels are spirit, and they're moving over the semen. Wow. So we are actually looking at an altar that is exactly Genesis verse, Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. Okay, in the spirit of Elohim, God's angels, magistrates, the spirit of Elohim, God's angels and magistrates, right there, moved over the face as the part, watch this, as the part that turns, uh-huh, over the waters, the semen, wow, right there. So the spirit moved over the semen. The spirit of what? God's angels and magistrates, Elohim. Well, let's look at that. Here it is. Here's all the Elohim moving over the semen there it is so now now this gift that the lord gave me should it should be the like one of the most profound things ever seen see the gods angels magistrates they're moving over see all the semen flowing down see the crown coming out of the penis that is the penis of lucifer the angel that is impregnating eve right there the spirit and then that infected the entire you know, the entire population, it went with Eve and then Adam fell and people have asked me questions. Well, did Adam have a homosexual relationship? No, there was a population on the planet already. It had been populated. Go forth and multiply. Who? These males and females that were created by Elohim. Watch. Here we go. Watch. I'll prove it out. Okay, let's go down to... So... One more time, the, the Ruach, the spirit of Elohim, God's angels and magistrates, moved upon the face as the part that turns of the semen. We got a big altar that proves that's true. 
Okay, now let's look right here. Genesis 126, and God said, okay, the word God is Elohim, Hebrew word 430. It is not Hebrew word 410, which is El, and then Elion, the Most High God. So the spirit of Elohim, God's angels, magistrates, said, let us, which is plural, make man, which is a hypocrite, a human being hypocrite, in our image. And the word for image is a phantom that is figuratively an illusion because the human host body is an illusion. Resemblance, hence a representative figure, look, especially an idol. Vain show, oh my gosh, what do you think you're looking at right here? Is that an idol? Is That's exactly what it is. It's a giant graven image. It's a giant graven image they made to their God, which is Lucifer. And he's the one that is in control over that entire group of Elohim that ended up here. So there it is. I mean, this is proven now. So see, this is the Prince of Darkness right here impregnating Eve. Now watch. And then Adam had sex with her, and they had heteropaternal superfecundation twins, Cain and Abel, and the whole system's cannibalistic. Okay, so here we go. Let's take the let's take the sheep. And the Bible says, and I'm going to tell you the reason I'm turning that upside down, Isaiah 29, 15. Woe unto them who go to great depths to hide their plans from the Lord. Their works are in the darkness, and they say, who seeth us, who knoweth us? Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. That's in Genesis 2, when the Lord God formed Adam as a potter from the dust clay. That's a different man. Okay, here we go. That means you've been restored. So here is the dead here is the dead sheep. I'll put it right here and turn it upside down. Like Isaiah said, woe unto them who go to great depths to hide their plans. They turn everything upside down. So when you turn this upside down, the penis that's shooting a seed, the seed becomes the clitoris, and this becomes a female reproductive system, and this open window becomes the opening to the vagina. There it is. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. So now you have one direction, the female reproductive system, and there it is laid right on top, and I'll just slide this one over here. There it is. Yeah, there, I mean, look at that. That's insane. There's the female reproductive system, and then here's the male reproductive system right there. See it? Look, there it is. Shooting the seed. So the clitoris is... It upside down, but when you turn it right side up, it's the seed going in. This is just phenomenal. Okay, so now, here we go. Okay, guys, that was the recapitulation. Get ready. Here comes the proof positive. No one can stop it. The Bible said, in the end, everything secret will be made public. So what are we really looking at right here? We're looking at angels that became flesh. That's what we're looking at. But what's really important is the flesh that they became. We all became the serpent. That's why when you turn that, when you look at the opening to the Vatican, or the, I mean, the the keyhole, it becomes, a, the cross becomes an upside down cross, and the upside down cross turns into a serpent. Let me show you. Okay, so here we go. So here is the Vatican. Here is the divining serpent. The word Vatican means divining serpent. Well, if you're looking straight down on the Vatican, this is what you're looking at right here. Let me just put that in your screen. So here we go. You have a keyhole, and the Vatican, the building itself, is an upside-down cross with this circle in the middle that becomes the crown of the serpent. But I just had Dave the Way put an upside-down cross here. Because that's what it is. And that represents who we are. We got turned upside down. And when we got turned upside down, the door locked. And we got turned into the serpent. So imagine this. See that white image right there of what's Jesus on the cross? Well, if you rotate this 180 degrees, boom. Light turns into darkness. Boom. And then when the door locks, it turns into the serpent. See, this, if I, if I can make this spin around 
and do a 180. I'll just go like that. Boom. So now the door's locked. So the, the key went in, which was the penis. Lock the door. Boom. The door's locked. And when the door is locked, it turns into the serpent. Do you understand? The locked keyhole, the, now the Vatican turns into the serpent flesh. That's why this whole thing is, is made out of black cobblestones. And the black cobblestones represent serpent flesh. Because the whole thing is pregnant. It's a pregnant serpent. Why well, had Dave put a, a serpent in the, in the keyhole? And the, there it is. Look, there it is. You see the cobblestones here? You see the snakeskin right here? Look. Watch. See that? Okay, you see the snakeskin? That's why they made the coal, whole keyhole over here. See, they made the whole keyhole snakeskin. Because now skin has locked you into your prison. Your snake skin, which is what you're in, locked you into your prison. Now let me show you. Let me show you something from the Targum, and then I'll we'll go to Genesis. Okay, and Adam called the name of his wife Hava, because she is the mother of all the children of men. And the Lord God made to Adam and his wife vestures of honor from the skin of the serpent which he had cast from him. Think about cast from him, cast out, cast down, cast away upon the skin of their flesh instead of that adornment which they had 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 been cast away and he clothed them. So this is from the Targum, Jonathan. It's Genesis uh, 3. And it's just uh, another way of understanding what Genesis says in the Bible. Let's go to Genesis 3 in the Bible. Genesis 3. Let's go down here. Okay. And Adam called the name of his wife Eve. It's really Hava, see? Because she is the mother of all the living. So that's exactly what we just read. And Adam, unto Adam and his wife did the, look, the Lord God, the self-existent Jehovah God, make, look, coats of skin. It means a garment, okay? Coats of skins, look. Hide, leather. Uh-huh, and it says skin as naked, because when you got put in these things, you were made, this is your nakedness. There you go, to be made naked. Now I'll walk it back. He made coats of hide, leather. Okay, and then we look at the Targum, and the Targum is correct, and so is the Bible. They're, they run hand in hand. And when you look at the Targum with this simple, obvious gift, here is the Vatican. Here is Genesis 1, uh, the, the serpent with serpent skin that's pregnant. And come, the mouth of the serpent right there is a bunch of angels because that's what the serpent is having for dinner. Also, the angels turn into semen. And the serpent bite was the sperm. Uh, and I'm going to show you that. In just a minute, I'm going to show you some more stuff concerning that. But I just wanted to throw that in there right now. So there it is. There's the serpent. The mouth of the serpent is a bunch of angels moving over the semen, which is exactly what Genesis says. Okay, now we got that. Let's go to this now. Here we go. Here's where things, here's where all the news data comes in. The Kelepot, uh husk, peel, or shell. This is where all the new data comes in right now. This is where it all happens. Okay, so here we go. Here we go, guys. This is where everything is going to explode. Now we have all that other foundational information. And now I told you we we're going to define Hindekogram, Kelepot, and Citra Akra. I told you we we're going to go back to the beginning and we're going to work our way back through. We're at the point to where we've worked our way back through. We're coming up on the Kelepot, the Citra Akra, and we're going to use a couple new scriptures that are going to define and prove everything out. Watch this. This is, I, guys, I literally, I almost can't process the gravity of what you're going to see right now. 
I don't know if you guys are going to be able to process it. I mean, <laughs> it's just like, ah, this is unbelievable. Here we go. Ready? Okay, Jude. There are certain men crept in underwear, unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our Lord God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, the, he says, therefore, I will put you in remembrance, you know, of the Lord having saved his people out of the land of Egypt, Egypt, destroyed them that believe not. And angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he has reserved in, look at this, everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Okay, so we're going to go down here to Esword. Let me show you this. We're going to go to Jude. There's only one chapter. We're going to go down to verse 6. No, one. I'll show you this. Look. They turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. Look at this. You look, at, look at what they turn the grace of God into. You, you remember the word licentiousness? Okay. I told you. Angels have free will. They have a choice. They have liberty as the children of God. So we are the creature. We, the whole human race is the creature. We are gods, but we're going to die like men. That's who we are. We're gods, angels, magistrates, but we're going to die like men. That's exactly what the Bible says. Genesis 1 proves it out. Um, all the script, uh, John 10, 34 Jesus said, your own scriptures say you're gods. They were going to stone him. He's like, no, you can't stone me, guys. Your own scriptures say you're gods. And if the word of God came unto y'all that are called gods, and then Jesus said, the scriptures cannot be broken. Why do you marvel that I say I'm the son of God? That's what he was. He was like, so what? I'm the son of God. Y'all are gods. He was quoting Psalm 82. Your own scriptures say you are gods, Elohim. You're all children of El Elyon. See, the most high. That's why... In in uh, Isaiah 14, it says, Lucifer said, I will arise above the stars, the princes of El. I will be like the Most High, Elion. Watch. Watch and freak out. Here we go. So, they turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. Look at what the word lasciviousness means. Licentiousness. Okay, go to Romans 8. Go to Romans 8. Remember the word licentious. Okay, here we go. Romans 8. Here we go. Wait a minute. Here we go. Now, we are the creature. We are a combination of God and human in one body. We are under a death sentence. Because the creature, look at this, the creature, watch this. The original formation, building, creation, creature. Oh, you mean from Genesis. Exactly. The original formation. Remember, Jesus is the stone rejected by the builders has become the chief cornerstone. So the original formation, building, creation, creature. That's who we are. Because the creature itself shall be delivered. Look. To liberate, the word is eleuthero. It's the male version of what my girlfriend was the night I got saved. And she represented licentious freedom. Okay. The creature shall be delivered, eleuthero, to liberate. To liberate. That is to exempt from moral, ceremonial, or mortal liability. There's your freedom right there. You will be delivered, eleuthero. The Bible says you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. The word for free is eleuthero. Okay, so that makes you free, exempt from moral liability, but here's the big one. You are no longer subject to mortal liability. Your descendants has been commuted because the creature itself shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption, slavery, Remember the guy at the Vatican wearing the big slave collar? Slavery of corruption, that means decay, 
ruin spontaneous like your body, the bondage of corruption into the glorious look, liberty of the children of God. The word liberty is eleutheria, eleuthera, A-H. It's feminine. Into the glorious liberty of the children of God. So the children of God have liberty. They have eleutheria. And what it means is you have legitimate Look at that word right there, or licentious freedom. That is your choice. That is your choice as an angel. You, but if you choose licentious, it's sin. That's what we're all doing here. This is proving out now. Watch this. Licentious, watch. I got the right here. The word licentious is lascivious right here. Watch. You see the word licentious? It means lascivious. Back to Jude. Okay. Turning the grace of our God into, look, lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God. Okay, now watch. Back to Romans. Back to Jude. I'm sorry. Back to Jude. Here we go. Turning the grace of God into lasciviousness it's licentious see because we were under grace and when you're under grace if you choose lascivious which is licentious you have either licentious or legitimate freedom you have eleutheria that's why god made sure the night i got saved i had a girlfriend named eleutheria i mean her name's eleuthera that's impossible it's like, this is crazy. And she was trying to stop me from going out the door so I, would, so I wouldn't know the truth, and the truth would set me eleuthero. You'll know the truth, and the truth will set you eleuthero. That's why I prayed to a male figure, our father, and I got saved. So here we go. Let's keep going. Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, licentiousness. See, they chose licentiousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. But the angels, which kept not their first estate, it means commencement of order, time, place, rank, because we were angels before we got here, and kept, and kept which kept not their first estate, but left to leave behind to forsake their own habitation, residence, which was heaven. He hath kept, he has reserved and look everlasting chains. Look ever during this is so important forward and backwards ligaments of the body. A ligament of the body right there. Look at that. So I'm going to make that yellow. So your everlasting chain, the everlasting chains of darkness. Now here's the thing. These enemies of God, they use the host body system. And, you know, like if somebody dies, if 20 people die, they still keep using that host body system. But the angel that was in that host body system, if you didn't get converted, you go to the pit and you're a food. But, the, you know, the hierarchy that's running this thing, they have, as long as they have a host body system, they're good. But. The Bible says, I will burn root and branch. So he's going to burn everything below ground, everything above ground. The earth is reserved for fire. He's got to burn it all. He's got to burn the whole system. So watch this. Forward and backwards, everlasting chains. Pay attention now. Ever enduring forward and backwards because those are the chains they can't get out of. Ligaments, shackles, ligament of the body shackle of a prisoner okay so they'll never get out of those they'll never get out of here they will never ascend above the clouds they'll never be like the most high elion they will not ascend above the throne of god l they will not be like elion the most high they're going to be confined to the system they've been quarantined and they're going to get burned so they've all been quarantined and we got here with them. They're using our energy. They're transmuting it in a host body system for a race of locusts. And they have a king over them, Apollyon. Here we go, guys. Watch this. Let's do the pictures now. 
Okay, remember Hindecagram, Calipot, and here we go with the folder. Okay, now we have the new folder. This folder is called Citra Acra, Calipot, Host Body, Transmutation, Statue of Eleutheria. Okay, well, what is the word liberty in your Bible? The sons of God are are under, I'm sorry, the creature itself shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty, Eleutheria, of the children of God. What does Eleutheria mean? Licentious or legitimate freedom. So the children of God, you have a choice. You can either take legitimate freedom in Christ or licentious freedom. If you choose licentious freedom, you don't get to choose the outcome. Okay, watch. Okay, now let's start going through some pictures. Now, I'm going to show you guys some imagery, and I'm going to show you how, like, even products that we use, advertising, stuff like that, is going to play into all this because it's all around you all the time. You just weren't able to see it. Watch this. Okay, so the serpent bite really was a sperm, wasn't it? Yeah, that was the venom that got the whole thing going. So the serpent bite really was a sperm. That's what it was. I mean, once once he put his sperm, that was that's what got this whole thing going inside of Eve. And then Adam knew Eve, and she had heteropaternal superfecundation twins. And I've used the Bible to prove that those were twins. I've gone through Genesis 4, and I've proven using the words and the translations of the word, that Eve continued her birth and she brought forth Abel. The word is augmented her birth. The word augment means to continue or add to. So when Eve kept birthing, first she brought forth Cain. The word for Cain, she said, I've gotten a man incurably sick, desperately wicked, woeful man from the Lord. That's what the word for man is for Cain. The word Cain means to strike a musical note. And then she brought forth Adam. She continued to birth and brought forth Adam. I mean, brought. I'm sorry. She continued to birth and brought forth Abel. Sorry, I said Adam. And that was Adam's son. So one was, Cain was a child of the devil, and Adam was a child of, I mean, and, sorry, and Abel was a child of Adam. I'm like, <laughs> it's like, that's like, I've got the bear up the tree. Okay, here we go. Watch. So now all this is going to make sense. So let me let me just go through the Targum again. And Adam called the name of his wife Hava because she is the mother of all the children of men. That's why the Catholics worship her. That's why the big uh, altar of the dead sheep, that's Eve's vagina, guys. That's what it is. That is That is what it is. And Adam called the name of his wife Eve because she is the mother of all the children of men. And the Lord God made to Adam and his wife vestures of honor from, look, the skin of the serpent, which he had cast from him upon the skin of their flesh instead of that adornment which had been cast away. And he clothed them because we used to have glorified bodies. You know how Jesus had a glorified body when he raised from the dead? We're joint heirs with Christ. An heir means you get everything the other guy got. You are an heir to, you know, whatever your dad leaves you. Well, what did Jesus get? He got a glorified body. So do we. We get a new body. That also Romans 8. You know what? I'm just going to go there real quick because I want you to know this. Romans 8. I'll prove it. Sorry, A-R-C, Romans. There we go. Romans 8, watch this. What are we waiting for? So look, so the the creature shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty, eleutheria, freedom, legitimate or licentious, uh, freedom of the children of God. The children as a child as produced of God, the supreme divinity. Okay. And not only they, but but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, it is Numa. It is not Ruach. It is Numa, a current of air, Christ's Spirit. It is not the same word as Genesis 1. The Holy Spirit. 
So we have the first fruits, the spirit waiting for the adoption. It, it means a placing as a son. So we're waiting for the adoption to wit. Look, the redemption. Look what it means. Ransom in full. Get ready to freak out. Riddance. Riddance of our body. The body. The slave. See? Your body is your shackle. I just used the Bible. The Lord led me to all this to prove it. We're waiting for the redemption of our body. We're ridding ourselves of this one, and we get a totally new thing. Just like Jesus, he crucified the flesh, and then he got a glorified body, and he was able to ascend into heaven. Guess what we get? That's right. We get glorified bodies. So if anyone's got a handicap or anything like that, I mean, if, you got, if you're crippled or something, let me tell you, that's only in here. It's not for there. You do get a new body, and you will not be subject to anything that this body's got you subject to. None of it. You get a new body. Look, we have the first fruits of the Spirit. Look, Christ's Spirit. There it is. The Holy Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, the placement as sons, to wit, the redemption. Look, ransom in full, that is riddance of our body, the body, slave. See, your body is what made you a slave. Now we're going to go to this Citra Acra and the Kelepot and freak out of your minds. It's going to blow your mind. Oh, my, oh my God, I got it. It's like the, this is the greatest resolution. I mean, you just... It doesn't get any bigger. This is huge. Watch. So now, see, look. Wait a minute. Okay, I'm, I'm so hyped up. I'm going to tone it down. Dial it down, Johnny. <laughs> Hang on one sec. Just a minute. <laughs> okay. Calm down. It's so exciting. Ah, it's so exciting. I can't take it. Okay, there we go. So we know the redemption. We've got the spirit, and we're waiting for the adoption of the son because we have our down payment and the redemption, the payment in full, and riddance of our slave bodies. There it is. Okay, now remember, Genesis 1 is, hey, you know, the spirit, the Ruach, Elohim, God's angels, magistrates. So the spirit of God's angels, magistrates moved over the semen and everybody got a body. That's why that altar is so profound that the Lord let me see it, that he took me to that altar and told me, just look at it. I'm like, what am I looking at? Let's look at it. And then the Lord revealed to me, it's a sheep with his tongue sticking out. Guys, I've had people draw pictures of me with sheep with their tongue sticking out. And we have some of those images that you haven't seen in this folder that's coming up, and now everything's gonna make total sense. Okay, calm down, Johnny. <laughs> this is so exciting. Okay, here we go. Let's do it. Okay, so we all got, look, our slave suits, the skin of the serpent. Why do you think? that the largest church in the world is a serpent. It's called the divining serpent. And why do you think all those cobblestones make black skin? Because it's true. That's why. Why do you think we have a bunch of angels right here turning into semen? Because that's Genesis 1.2. This is the spirit of Elohim moving over the semen. How is it that some human beings able to show you an altar that's actually Genesis 1.2? What are you joking? I mean, seriously? I'll tell you why. Because the Bible says in the end, everything that's secret will be made public. I'm showing you the mystery of all mysteries. And I'm sharing it with you because the Lord God shared it with me. And I'm a messenger. And oh, here we go. So there's 
Genesis, uh, Genesis uh, chapter one, verse two. And that is also, that is also the serpent planting his seed in Eve. That's, that's literally Lucifer. Yep. And that's it. And then we have the Cain and Abel system, which is cannibalistic. So you turn that upside down, it becomes that. Slide it right over there. That's exactly perfect. So now we know. Okay, that is no longer open for debate. One thing I would like to show you while we're on this page. You see this giant bug with the blue eyes and the antennas and the mandibles? I want to take this an anatomical drawing of a penis, which is that seat right there. And that's the seat. Oh, rats. I hate it when it does that. And it turns into a penis going in the mouth of a bug. Because what's in the pit, what's in the pit is is a bug, is the angel of the bottomless pit, Apollyon, the, they had a king over them. And see that chair? That's really a penis going in the mouth of a bug. It's harvesting it. Uh, it's just one of the craziest things ever. It's a reality, though. Okay, so now let's go back. Here we go. Okay. So see, the very beginning started with serpent skin, didn't it? Why do you think, okay, now I'm going to just slow down. Why do you think the Vatican's a big serpent? Why do you think it's pregnant and it's got serpent skin? It's pregnant with all of us. That's why. The serpent is pregnant with all of us, the entire planet. Now, ready for the everlasting chains of darkness? What does the word everlasting mean? Y'all remember? Do y'all remember what the word everlasting means? We'll go to Jude chapter 1. What does the word everlasting mean? I want you to remember. The word everlasting means forward and backwards, ever enduring. Forward and backwards, chains of darkness. Okay. And the word chains is ligament of the body, shackle. Because those chains of darkness were made by the serpent. Well, actually, the Lord God, you know, he's the one that made it all happen because of the wanting licentious freedom. Okay, so here we go. Let me show you some imagery now, right now that just supports all this. So here is a uh, type of alcohol. It's called serpent bite. They got it exactly correct. It's a sperm. And I'm going to slide it down a little bit. Okay, you see, let me slide down a little bit more. Let's see. Uh, I'm trying to cover up the fangs. There we go. You see the owl right here? There's the eye. There's the eye. There's the beak. Okay, well, you know, uh, they they worship Molech, even though Molech's, you know, it's debatable whether or not it's the owl or whether or not it's, you know, another animal. But they use the owl all the time. So anyway, there's... There's the eye, there's the eye, there's the beak of the owl. Now, if you look at that as the eye, the eye, and the nose, and those are fangs of the serpent. Now you look at this part, and it's a sperm. So the serpent's bite is a sperm. Uh, how they get that right uh, on the alcohol? Because it's just an outward manifestation of the truth. So here, let me show you. I'm going to click on the Vatican, which means divining serpent. And now we're just going to go through these pictures and watch it play out. And then we'll get into the kelepot and you guys are going to freak out. So here we go. Here's the Vatican. Here's, here's the cobblestones. The serpent's pregnant with all of us. That's what this represents. And that's why this Mickey Finn serpent bite. That's what it's, it's no different. It's the same thing. And it has the, the sperm going towards an apple, making a reference to the Garden of Eden. Okay, now here we go. We're just going to kind of breeze through this. I want to show you guys what the word government means because I know you guys have probably watched the governments around the world are coming off the rails. In all these countries, they're going against the their, you know, the one world push for a world government. And the citizens of these different countries are like, no. And like here in the U.S., we have the Democrats pushing just constant insanity and lies. They really are. I mean, I'm uh, guys, I'm not a political party at all, but I can tell you one thing. The Democrats, they are delusional by definition. 
they believe their own lies. Even when they're faced with uh, uh, evidence that proves otherwise, they will not quit believing their own delusional nonsense. And it's, it's, gotten, it's gotten out of hand. We're moving into this strong delusion. Here you go. Government. It means to control governo, governare, to control mentis, the mind. Okay, that's what government means. So now we're going to look at a, an image of the Vatican and the tongue of the serpent goes to what's called the Palacio de Gubernatari. Okay, so here's the serpent right here, and you see the tongue of the serpent? It's going to this building. That's the palace of the government. And what's really fascinating about that is, look, you see the tongue? You got one fork of the tongue going to this building, which is identical to this building where the other fork is going. It's truth and lies coming out of the same mouth. And that's the government of the serpent for the world. And that's why the tongue is going to the halls of government. All you got to do is turn on uh, CNN or NMSNBC and then turn it to Fox and watch the difference. It's insane. Okay, here we go. Now, here we go. There's just some good images of the the divining serpent that I colored in for you guys. Now, here we go. Y'all remember everlasting chains of darkness? It means everlasting means forward and backwards. And chains means ligaments and a shackle. Okay, y'all remember that? Here we go. Does anybody know what that is right there? That's the eye of Ra, the sun disk. Did you know Ra is the creational deity of the Egyptians? You know that open eye in you, the, the all-seeing eye? That is the eye of Ra. Watch this. Let me show you something fascinating. Uh, do you see a circle? Do you see a serpent going one way and a serpent going the other way? Oh, everlasting chains of darkness. You're looking at it. You're looking at those chains of darkness because the creation story for all these other uh, ancient civilizations all goes back to serpents. It's crazy. I was like, wait a minute. You got the Aztecs, you got the Mayans, you got the Egyptians, and you start going around the world, and there's all these creation stories of the serpent that created humanity. And I'm like, well, they're right. They're right, but it's because the Lord God cast them from him into serpent flesh. And so everyone's quarantined. Look. Oh, let's look at the double-headed turquoise serpent Aztec British from the Aztec British Museum. Double-headed turquoise serpent. It's Aztec, and it's from at the British Museum. Oh, look, forward and backwards. Oh, the and then you get into the creation stories of uh, you know, Kukla Khan and the feathered serpent, and you get into their creation stories. And it's that a serpent created humans, the creation myths from all these ancient cultures. Isn't it interesting? They have serpents facing opposite, forward and backwards direction. Wait a minute. The Vatican is a big serpent that's got, oh my gosh, the creation story right inside the mouth of the serpent. The spirit of Elohim moving over the semen. It's all true. Gets better. Watch. Oh my gosh. Here's another Mayan serpent. Now, this is, we're going to look at this as in, a, in another way. Let me give you an example. Watch. If I have, if I start everything down where my thumbs go and I go opposite directions, but I go in a circle, they end up pointing at each other. So if I start at six o'clock down here, and I go like this, and I have something moving opposite directions, well, then they come up if I make a circle, and they're facing each other. Forward and backwards. Chains of darkness. Ready? Here we go. So here's another serpent, um, from a Mayan serpent. And there is an... So this is 
a serpent facing this direction, and then there's a serpent facing that direction, but they both come together to make one thing. Now begins the two-in-one understanding, like the Twin Towers, and there's two that make one. So here's one eye of the serpent, here's the other eye, and so here's the mouth. This is all one face. Even though they're profiles of two different serpents, it makes one big face. And guess what? It becomes a bug. Where have I seen that? Repetitively with the stuff in the Catholic Church again. So now you're looking at a serpent, a profile, and a profile. And the two profiles come together, and it makes a bug. Wow, wait a minute. Let me just do a quick... Google image search and because this just popped into my mind from the other night Pink Floyd album covers oh wow you mean like that oh yeah there's a pro one man and another man the race of man in Genesis 1 the race of man in Genesis 2 and the two together make one. Do you see? That's one big face. It's also a singular profile and a singular profile. But the two together make one face. That is no different than this serpent from the ancient Mayan culture. Here we go. Here is its uh, Zoshikal... Uh, I'm sorry. Zoshikalco Serpiente. Right here. Zoshikalco Serpiente. Okay, let's look at this one. So here's this big uh, monolith, and what does it have? Opposing serpents. There's one, and there's a chains of darkness. Then this all has to do with the creation story of man in all these cultures. Oppose, oh, chains of darkness, everlasting chains of darkness. Because their host body system is what they wanted, and it's what they're counting on to continue. That's why they're going towards transhumanism, so they can have their own host body system that they can control and never have taken away. Okay, now let me show you something right here. Here is, this is called the Citra Akra. Okay, now remember, we went over the definitions of a hindecogram, and we went over the meanings of the Kelepot, and we went over the meanings of Citra Akra. We're going to do it again because now we're there. Pay attention. This is going to... It's going to blow your mind. <laughs> it's like so crazy. Okay, profile of a dragon and a profile of a dragon. You see the two profiles? Well, the two profiles together make the face of one big dragon. It's just you got to be able to see, you know, the Lord again gave me a very special set of eyes to be able to see the altars and to see all this. That's the face of a dragon. That's the eye right there. There's the eye right there. There's the nostril, nostril, the mouth, and there the horns are on both sides of the dragon's head. This is no different than the Pink Floyd thing, watch. I'll drag this into here. This is no different than that. It's the same exact thing as Pink Floyd. No different, absolutely the same. Let's see, let's try and get that back in there. There we go. So no different. Now let me show you something. Y'all may remember I did a Google Doodle. I break down the Google Doodle sometimes because they're so ridiculously obvious. I don't like them trying to get away with mocking us all the time with their little Google Doodles. Let me show you the Google Doodle back, uh, I think it was from maybe Valentine's Day. is a while back. But I remembered it. You see that? Let's look at it. What do you see? Well, let me tell you something. If those are ducks and... You would look down here and you would see that they made a thing like look like water. So I don't know any birds that float on top of the water and have really sharp pointy bills like that. And I don't know any birds that eyes look that even if they're closed. That's a letter U and that's a letter U representing male and female energy. And the male energy and the female energy together makes the head of a serpent with its mouth open 
and those are fangs. That's the system you're in. And that's Google mocking you. So let me just draw it in for you real quick. There you go. Here you go. And now we're ready for the Citra Acra, the Kelepot, and we're going to slam this thing home. Okay, you see the serpent with its mouth open? There's the eye of the serpent. There's the eye. His eyes are closed. He's got yellow fangs. That's the head of a serpent. And it's a W. Can somebody tell me how is that any different at all from the Mayan pyramid stuff? It's not. It's no different at all. It's no different than the Citra Acra. It's the same thing. The two making one. The male and the female making one thing. Now, I'm, now I've gotten into what this is all about. The two making one. Do you ever, like, you, some people may scoff at this, but don't scoff at it. It's true. Domino's Pizza. It's a two and a one. Do you think that's out an accident? That's an outward manifestation of the truth. Two and one. Like the Twin Towers, the two became one. It's like uh, if you're wearing an Under Armour logo, you got a U and an A intersecting, making one logo, the U and the A. You know what? Let's just look at it. Because this is the nature of everything that you're, this is the nature of everything now. So we'll do, it's the nature of this, this system that you're in. Under Armour. There you go. Okay, so Under Armour. See, one, two. The two make one. Okay, that's the whole point. The right side up, upside down, makes one. And what do they make with it? They made an X, which represents the female chromosome, because you're in their system. There you go. That's what this is. You're in the female mother goddess system. That's why the Statue of Liberty is this. I mean, the word liberty means, in the Bible, Eleutheria, the Statue of Eleutheria, licentious or legitimate freedom. Obviously, it's representing the liberty they took was licentious. Why do you think she's got a penis in her hands? Okay, now it's all making sense, isn't it? Wow, everything is making total sense now. Let's go back. Okay, Google Doodle right here. Look, what is the difference? There is no difference. Okay, now, here we go, guys. This is where y'all are going to... You know what? Let's take a minute. Everybody go get one of these out of your cupboard. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> this is it. Let's do it. Let's do our definitions. Y'all know what alchemy is? The ancient metaphysical science slash mystical art of manipulating and altering matter by using natural energy. Okay, well, let me ask you a question. If you took an angel and you trapped him in a host body with a demon, would you be using natural energy? If you trapped him within a host body called a kelepot that is inherently evil, that's 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 tied to a realm of evil, that's tied to a realm of evil that's termed that realm of evil is termed Sitra Akra. Let me show you uh, something about in Jewish Kabbalistic cosmology. The kelepot are metaphorical shells surrounding holiness. Here's where things take off, folks. The kelepot, which is your body, are metaphorical shells, which is your body. Okay, remember what Romans 8 said? We're awaiting our adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word redemption means the riddance of our slave body. So the kelepot are metaphorical shells surrounding holiness. They are spiritual obstacles receiving their existence from God only in an external rather than internal manner. manner. Divinity in Judaism connotes revelation of God's true unity while the shells, the shells conceal holiness as a peel conceals the fruit within. Therefore, watch this, they are therefore 
synonyms with idolatry, and they are the root of impurity through ascribing false dualism to the divine. Because the the divine, the Lord your God is one. He's not two in one. Do you understand? It's not two two different energies. The Lord your God is one. This is two separate things within the host body. Now watch. Okay. They are therefore synonyms with what? Read it for yourself. So your host body, the the kelepot, the shell, is a synonym with idolatry. I want you to look at that. Stare at it. The host body is a synonym with idolatry. The host body is a synonym with idolatry. Genesis 1.26. And Elohim said, Let us make man a hypocrite in our vain show. A representative figure, especially an idol. Hence, there it is. See, I just we just proved it. So the kelepot is, our host body is an idol. See right there. <laughs> yes! Now get ready. The statue, We're just getting started now on this. The statue of Eleutheria, licentious or legitimate freedom, obviously that statue represents, hey, we took licentious freedom. That's why she's got a penis in her hand, and the flame is the imprisoned lightning. Jesus said, John said, one is coming after me that will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And the word for fire is lightning. I'll show it to you. So we're the imprisoned lightning. Who brought us here? Lucifer, the light bearer. Oh, and it masquerades as this female thing. Okay, again. Elohim said, gods, angels, magistrates. Remember, H430. Gods, angels, magistrates said, let us make man a hypocrite in our vain show. Hence, a representative figure, especially an idol. There it is. Okay, now back to this. The kelepot or metaphorical shell surrounding holiness. They are synonyms with idolatry. The root of impurity through the ascribing false dualism in the divine. And that dualism is the male-female energy in one thing. So, Elohim created man in his vain show, hence a representative figure, especially an idol. And he created them male and female. Oh my gosh, wait a minute, stop. Hold the presses, everybody. He created them what? He created the male and what? He created the male and female. That's why the largest altar is a male and a female. There's a female. There's the male. All you got to do is turn it upside down. <laughs> Wait a minute. You got to do this to, to Satan and his kingdom. <laughs> Yeah, you're busted. <laughs> yeah, so they did create them male. Let's do the male first. So they did create them male and female. They created them as an idol. Oh, my gosh. The kelepot or metaphorical shell surrounding holiness. They are synonyms with idolatry. Oh, wow. Let us create man in our image. A representative figure, especially an idol. Now we're going to change that color to something that really stands out. There you go. Hence, a representative figure, especially an idol. And I'll do vain show purple. There you go. Uh huh. There you go. Oh my gosh. So the host body is what? It's an idol. 
Ooh. You know, I mean, come on, let's just be honest. I mean, it's a no-brainer once you know. It's like, duh. Just go through the grocery. Go through the gro to the grocery store and just look at the magazines. I mean, come on. It's like a no-brainer. Okay, so let's get back to it. Let's get ready. It's going to get better. It's going to get even better. It can't get any better, Jonathan. This is already too great. I know. Let's go through... Let's go through this one, uh, alchemy one more time. It is a metaphysical science, mystical art of manipulating and altering matter by using natural energy. That way you get male and female. You get God's energy trapped into a dualistic system. This act is known as transmutation, and its sequence is as described. Number one, comprehension. Understanding the inherent structure and properties of of the atomic or molecular makeup of a particle. That includes light, people. The particular particle or material to be transmuted, including the flow and the balance of potential and kinetic energy within. Okay, that means basically, hey, you got to know what you're going for. We're going for God's angels. We got to know what they are. We got to know how to break them down. And we not get, need to know how how to use the potential and kinetic energy to get what we want. Deconstruction, using energy to break down the physical structure of the identified material into a more malleable state so as to be easily reshaped into a new form. I got a great idea. Let's put them in a host body system and we'll put a demon link to them. We'll have two different energies. And then because they're separated from the Lord God, they will be turned into something different they'll no longer be acceptable there and so they'll have to go a different direction when that host body dies the polar opposite reconstruction continuing the flow of energy so as to reform the material into a new shape okay well where does the energy go it goes to the pit because you got the angel trapped you did a 180 on him and you burned him up and sent him to the pit now, unless he gets converted, then he goes the opposite direction. Because if you have a system like this, watch. You have a circle. Pretend, or, pretend you have an invisible globe. And in there, you have this situation. Opposing energies. Opposing. Well, when that thing, when that shell dies, the kelepot, when it dies, that energy is subject to a magnetic field. It's energy. But if you did this within the system and they went, boom, then it's subject to an opposite polarity. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we go. Watch. Let's, now we're really going to knock down this whole Statue of Liberty Kelepot thing. Y'all are going to freak out. Get your, get your brown bags to breathe in because you're going to need them. Get your spatula, get your brown bags, <laughs> just get some Valium, and <laughs> just get whatever you need, because here it comes. Come on. What's this thing doing? Okay, let me pause it. Okay, so now here we go. Let's, 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 we talked about alchemy. Now we're going to talk about the Kelepot, remember? There's the Kelepot, remember? Okay, now I want you all to pay very close attention. Here's where your super education comes in. Okay, there it is. We've already looked at it. We've defined it. We know what it is. You see that star that's right in the middle of the kelepot? It's right side up. Picture the top as a head, two arms, and two legs. That represents one of God's princes. But if you turn the kelepot, the whole thing, if you take this thing and you turned it 180 degrees upside down, then, if you're up here at 12 o'clock, you see these two triangles right here? See this triangle and this triangle? Up, up here at the top, there's two. See the two? But down here, there's only one. Watch. If we're at 12 o'clock, if we're looking at this as like a clock, and this is 12 o'clock, and this is 6 o'clock, at 6 o'clock, there's only one triangle. But at 12 o'clock, it's split up into two. Like Domino's Pizza, two and one. Now watch. Okay, so up here we have two. Let's count the triangles in between. One, two, three, 
four. Okay, so there's two up here, and there's one, two, three, four here. Okay, let's go to this side. There's still the two up here. One, two, three, four. And there's one down here. So the two become one. Okay, when you rotate it 180 degrees. The two become one as you rotate that kilopot 180 degrees. So the two triangles up here, as you turn it upside down, the two become one triangle. Do you understand? This is huge. This represents the host body system where you have the two things, but when you rotate it upside down, it becomes one. That's why the Twin Towers turned into the One World Freedom Tower. You had two, and the two became one because the Twin Towers represents the host body system. From the beginning, Cain and Abel, the twin system, the cannibalistic system has cannibalized the system and the two have become one. That's why they burned down the Twin Towers and that's why the Twin Towers turned into the One World Freedom Tower and they made sure it was called Twin Towers and then they made sure the new one was called One World Freedom Tower. The two became one. That's why George Bush read Psalm 23, because each parent donates 23 chromosomes. 23 and 23 is 46. But when you tore them down and you put the one, the two that became one, Barack Obama read Psalm 46. And he said, be still and know that I am God because he's the host body for Elohim, Satan in the flesh. Get ready. Here we go. I told you. Get ready. Okay, now I've shown you this. Now watch. Let's get, now here we go, guys. Buckle up. Here we go, man. This is so freaking crazy awesome. This is so cool. Okay, so we're going to look at this definition again, but I want to read to you the book of Sitra Akra. Now watch this. Okay, watch. I, I'm gonna open up. I'm gonna open up a link. I want to just show you guys how pervasive this is. The Bible says, "Be as wise as a serpent, but as gentle as a dove." Okay, so now watch this. Let's see. Google Images. Let me do images. There we go. Citra Akra Kelapot. Oh wow! Wait a minute. Okay, so here's. Here's the Citra Akra. Look at this. Oh, you, you see the two opposing uh, dragons? If you start down here at 6 o'clock, one went this way and one went this way. Everlasting chains of darkness. And this represents the host body system. The Kelopot. Oh, my Lord. Wait a minute. Oh, night side of Eden. Isn't that great? Here we go. Look. Let me go over that again. Watch. Let me go over this again. Look. There's the kelepot. And it's got opposing dragons that go in a circle. And there's a crown up here. That's Aleph, Dalet, and, and Vav. By the way, Aleph, Dalet, and Vav, they have numbers associated with them. And this is a crown on top of the serpent's system. This is the, these are the everlasting chains of darkness, and this is the host body system. Just watch. We're, I'm going to make sure you understand that. You know what? I shouldn't have done that. Wait a minute. Hang on. I shouldn't have knocked it out. I want to keep that up. The Citra, Akra, and the Kelopot. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to leave that right there. So you got, we're going to go back to this in just a minute. Okay, now, here we go. The book of Sitra Akra is the first complete and completely what? Kelopotic grimoire. Okay, let me show you uh, what a grimoire is. Let's do our definitions. Grimoire. 
A Book of Magic Spells and Invocations. A Grimoire is a book of magic spells and invocations. Don't you think it's weird that the Book of Magic Spells and Invocations has serpents going the opposite direction? Everlasting Chains of Darkness surrounding a kelepot, which is a shell, a peel, or a husk. Wait a minute. The serpent, everlasting chains of darkness, everlasting forward and backward chains of darkness. And the word chains is ligament. Uh, yeah, everlasting forward and backward chains, ligaments of the body, and the kelepot represents the host body system. <laughs> Do you understand? Their book proves it out. What? Just watch. <laughs> so crazy. Okay, now we're going to get into it. Here we go. The Citra Akra is the first complete and completely calipotic grimoire. What's a calipot? A calipot is a metaphorical shell surrounding holiness. It represents the host body. Okay? They are therefore synonyms with idolatry because your host body is an idol. Let us create man in our own vain show. Representative figure, especially especially an idol. Look, the root of impurity through ascribing false dualism in the divine, male and female. And with the Sitra Akra, the other side, the perceived realm opposite to holiness. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, boy. Here we go. The book of Sitra Akra is the first completely kelepotic, which means host body, book of a book of spells, grimoire, book of spells and invocations, providing the foundation for a spiritual and transcendental initiate initiatic approach. It's to initiate initiatic approach to the other side. So you think of Jim Morrison, break on through to the other side because they want to be in contact with this thing. Within the system and tradition presented inside this book, the very essential core of the 2018 for the first time ever made public, dispelling both the smoke screens and misconceptions surrounding the anti-cosmic tradition of, look, Gnostic Satanism and Luciferianism. Providing to those that hear the heedless, hear the voices call of Azarate as the means for entering and traversing the path of black fire towards the thrones of the dragons of the other side. Okay, let me just break that down to you. The Sitra Akra, which means the other side in the realm of evil, is inexorably tied to the calipot, which is our body. That's why the Statue of Liberty is standing on top of a calipot. That's why the Statue of Liberty is called the Mother of Exiles, which represents Lucifer holding the torch with all your essence in it, with the imprisoned lightning. And, he's, and she's holding a penis standing on top of the host body system. <laughs> That's what the Statue of Liberty stands for. I was always in eh, the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's bigger than you thought. This is huge. Unbelievable. Okay, here we go. Let's go back. Okay, so now we've read that. The Book of Sitra Akra. Look, a grimoire of dragons of the other side. Okay, again, Kendecagram on the same page. Statue of Eleutheria, Liberty. Kelepot, it is. In Hebrew, it means literally peel, shells, or husk are the representation of evil or impu, Im, I'm sorry, impure spiritual forces in Jewish mysticism. The polar opposites of the Holy Sephirot. The realm of evil is also termed Sitra Akra, 
the other side. So the Kelepot and the realm of evil that runs the the Kelepot is the Sitra Akra. Do you understand? Do y'all get it? The Sitra Akra, the realm of evil that controls the 11 pointed star, the Kelepot Hindekogram, which is what the Statue of Liberty, the mother of exiles, the mother, and she's the mother of all the locusts in the pit. Come here, bad cat. Come here, buddy. You know I love you, but you got to go over there. There you go. Okay. Here we go. Let's do it. Now watch this. Get ready to freak out. Oh, my gosh. This is so crazy. Uh, be as wise as a serpent. Here we go. We got him. Oh, this is so cool. Okay, ready? Remember Jude and angels that went after strange flesh? He is kept in everlasting chains of darkness, everlasting forward and backwards. That's why the serpents are facing opposite directions. It's always the serpent facing opposite directions or facing opposite directions coming in a circle where the two make one face. Wow, because the two make one. Yeah. Here we go. Watch. Ready? Okay. You see this? Do you all know what you're looking at? You're looking at a bunch of snakes in a circle. It's a calipot. It's, it, it represents the host body. Look at it. I mean, literally, watch. Ready? Well, let's go down to 6 o'clock. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There's 11 snake heads. There's 11 vertices. And you got the, the sigil of Lucifer. Look at that. Oh, my Lord. They know. Now, ready? Ready? Ready, guys? Uh, this is going to blow your mind. <laughs> okay, here is Baphomet on top of the Kelepot. That's why Baphomet has male and female parts. Look. Dun, 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 dun. So, see there, look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So, here is Baphomet. On top of the Kelepot, which is the same thing the Statue of Liberty's on. <laughs> yeah, the two becoming one. See, the the two, the everlasting chains of darkness, DNA, see? See, I'm wrapping into DNA, coming out of the center of the Kelepot, look. Everlasting chains of darkness, like the Caduceus, and it's facing opposite, to, they're, they're opposites, see? And they come together to make one. And look at this, there's Baphomet, ah, male and female in the same body that's what they worship male female in the same body that's why all this gender identity politics is going crazy it's like dude isn't this cool yeah yeah we got him we totally got him man this is it the whole thing that's a calipot folks that's what the statue of liberty's on and she's holding a penis in her hand. And inside that that torch, it says, the whose flame is the imprisoned lightning. Oh, my gosh. You've got to be kidding. Hang on. This thing's buffering. Okay, so here we go. So let's do it now. Look how we got it now. Okay, so, again, the Kelepot, uh, housing the essence of holiness. See, right there. Okay, it's an 11-pointed star. It's got two at the top, one at the bottom. See, two two vertices, one, two at the top, but only one at the bottom. 
So if you turn this, if it makes this 180 degree cycle, the two become one. Okay, here we go. Watch. Now let's just slide this right on top of the book of Citra Acra. <laughs> oh my gosh. What the heck? It's exactly perfectly identical because this is the book. This is called, you know, this book right here is a Citra Acra. It's, yeah, Grimoires of the Dragons from the Other Side. So now here's the system. In the middle, you have a star, and that star represents one of God's angels. Have I not said you are God's? But you shall die like men, you shall fall like one of the princes. Here's one of the princes. But when you turn it upside down, you turn him into the church of Satan. You turn him into the host system of the devil. Oh, wow. So look, here's the Statue of Liberty. See, look, watch. Now, Statue of Liberty is on top of a calipot. Okay, and there it is. It actually lined up, see? Representing uh, representing a peel shell or a husk. And she is standing on it because she is the mother goddess system that is transmuting it into food for a race of pits in the for food for a race of locusts in the pit. That's why she's facing the direction watching the rising sun because the rising sun represents Apollyon, like Apollo, the sun god, coming up out of the pit. She's waiting. It's a representation. They built a statue like eventually the rising sun, Apollo, will come up out of the pit. Apollyon coming out of the pit. This is just unbelievable. We got it. There it is. Statue of Eleutheria, licentious freedom. This represents licentious, not legitimate. You only have legitimate freedom in Christ. This represents licentious. That's why she's holding a penis in her hands. And it says, whose flame is the imprisoned lightning. God, this thing is buffering. Hang on, guys. Okay, so here we go. There you go. Let's let's read the poem real quick. The New Colossus. And, you know, they're talking about the New Colossus. Like, there was the Colossus at Rhodes. Not like the brazen giant of Greek fame with conquering limbs astride from land to land. I don't know if you got... Okay, here we go. So here's the New Colossus. I'm sorry. Here's the Statue of Liberty poem. It says, not like the brazen giant of Greek fame. Let me show you what that is. That's what they're talking about. That's the Colossus at Rhodes, the the brazen giant of Greek fame, fame with limbs astride from land, with his limbs astride from land to land. That's the Colossus at Rhodes. So the Statue of Liberty, not like the brazen giant of Greek fame with conquering limbs astride from land to land. Here at our seawash sunset gates shall stand a mighty woman with a torch whose flame is the imprisoned lightning. Guys, we are that imprisoned lightning. We are the imprisoned lightning. And that's why the flame is going through a penis to create host bodies, which is what she's standing on, the calipot, which is inherently evil, the host body system. That's why the works of the flesh destroy you. It's the greatest, this is the greatest knowledge in the world, guys. It doesn't get any bigger. Okay, so here we go. So here is the mother of exiles. So the, the queen of heaven, the mother of exiles, and what's she holding in her hand, whose flame is the imprisoned lightning. The imprisoned lightning comes through a penis which is the base of her torch. So there it is. So there's the imprisoned lightning. There's the penis. And then that ends up in a kelepot, a host body. Now let me show you just something amazing. Watch this. Let's take, let's take the statue. Okay, I'm going to take this drawing of the Statue of Liberty because I like uh, the angle on it. 
It says the most dangerous place in the world is between a mother and her children. Okay, I'm going to show you guys in these in these other folders that the between a mother and her children, there's all these women that have these locust tattoos on them inside of a transmutation circle. That's why these women are doing this. It is a manifestation of who and what they serve. So we'll get to them in just a second, but watch. So the most dangerous place in the world is between a mother and her children. Okay, what's the Statue of Liberty standing on? What's she standing on? A kelepot and 11-pointed star. So, wow, let me show you the this book of uh, Baphomet and Citra Acra. Let's just take the Statue of Liberty and put her right on top of the 11-pointed star. There is no difference. See, look, right here. Here is Baphomet in the energy that's coming out of that and the opposing serpents, chains of everlasting darkness. See, it's coming out of their 11-pointed star. That is a kelepot. So what's the difference between the Statue of Liberty being on top of that or Baphomet? The answer is nothing. Not a darn thing. It's the same thing. There it is. Okay, so now, so she's holding the imprisoned lightning up there whose flame is the imprisoned lightning, and then that imprisoned lightning goes through a penis into a host body system. That's why it says, and Adam knew Hava's wife, who had desired the angel, and she conceived in bare Cain. She said, I have acquired a man, the angel of the Lord, and she added to bear from her husband Adam, his twin, even Abel. So Cain and Abel were twins. And when you say Cain and Abel together, cannibal. The system is cannibalistic. That's why the Lord had me be sunglasses that were called vampires. Vampires are also cannibals. That's why he had me falling out of the sky upside down with fangs on to show me. That's where you came from, Johnny. You got kicked out into a vampiric system. Okay, here we go. So. Cain and Abel, there it is. Now watch, here's all, well, here's all we got to do. Put them right in there. That's the system. Cain and Abel, cannibalistic. That's the whole system. The system is two and one. Two and one. That's a representation of the Twin Towers. It's no different. Watch. I'll take Cain and Abel, and I'll put them right over here on the Twin Towers because one devours the other. It's cannibalistic just like the Twin Towers burning, Cain and Abel. And once they burned, it's no different than Pink Floyd. Wish you were here, but you're not here because we burned you up. That's the system. The system is cannibalistic. So one burns the other, and then you no longer need the twin system, and then you put in its place the one world because the two have become one. You no longer have the two, you have the one. And anyone that opposes it in this world, what you do is you kill them. You say you either take the mark of the beast, you take the mark of our government because we rule this place. And if you don't take it, you don't get to stay in our world. That's why they're going to kill all Christians. If you don't take that mark, that's why. If you take the mark, you're guaranteed eternal suffering. Okay, let's see. There it is. Okay, let me let me just make another point right here. Here it is. The book of Sitra Akra. Look, watch this. So you have, see the two serpent heads up here? That is a hindecogram, folks. Those are your everlasting chains of darkness that the Statue of Liberty should be standing on top of this. Can you imagine if the Statue of Liberty was standing on top of something that actually had 11 snake heads? You think everybody would freak out? That's the truth. That's what it's actually on. It's the same darn thing. Okay, here's the book of Sitra See all the serpents going around it? What do you see here? One, two. What do you see here? Two and one. There you go. Oh my gosh, their little system has been completely found out and made manifest by the word of God itself. 
those everlasting chains, forward and backwards, serpent. That's why all these different cultures have serpents facing the opposing directions or they go in a circle and they meet and the two become one. Yeah. <laughs> Busted. Oh my gosh. And so now all this stuff plays out. Like, you know, y'all know who Marilyn Manson is. Look, see, that's a spirit that owns this guy. So he's putting one eye in the dark because that's, that's the system. One is in the dark. Uh, he's one of, he's a functioning robot to the Citra Akra, the other side. And he's biting on his tongue because he's manifesting the dead sheep. He's making fun of the sheep. This is a, a tattoo from here in, San, uh, here in San Antonio. It's a demon. Demon tattoo, San Antonio tattoo artist gallery. Wicked ways. Wicked ways. See the tongue sticking out? That's no different than making fun of the sheep. Because when they bite down on their tongue like that, like Miley Cyrus, uh, like Obama sticking his tongue out, that's a demon mocking the dead sheep. That's what it is. That's why this guy at the Vatican that's in the everlasting chains of darkness, he's in these big, this big braided uh, chain look. You see that shadow right there? That's his tongue sticking out. I, I mean, I saw, I've seen it many times. I just went, why would they make, why would they put a ridge on his chin like that that reflects light? Because that's really his tongue. All you have to do is reduce it in size. And it's no different than the altar of the dead sheep. Now we know it all. We know everything. There it is. So there's a human in a slave collar and his tongue sticking out. But when you turn him upside down, well, you know what? Let, before we turn him upside down, let's enlarge him and look at the twin system. Okay, look. This is a fetus. Here is a fetus. And here is the umbilical cord. Look at the black lines. Look at the lines. That's an umbilical cord. That is going from one side of the guy's head to the fetus. And here is another umbilical cord going from this side of his head to the other fetus. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. The host body, remember? Wait a minute. While the shells conceal holiness as a peel that conceals the fruit within, they are therefore synonymous with idolatry, the root of impurity through ascribing false dualism to the divine. See that? See the false dualism? Dual means two. Like, you know, dueling banjos or let's have a duel where two people fight. Look right here. See the dualism? One... Two, and so that's what rules this system. He's double-minded. The Bible says, cleanse your hearts, you double-minded. <laughs> yes, got it. We know what this is now. It is not arguable anymore. No one can come against it. You see his tongue sticking out? This human, when you turn him upside down, you know what, before we turn him upside down, I'm going to show you that he is the creature. He is a beast. You see the slave collar underneath him? It turns to a beast. Let's see. Right there. See the yellow eye, the yellow eye, the nose, and the fangs? There you go. Eye, eye, fang, fang, tongue. So there, he has turned from man to beast. The beast will be unleashed. Now, when we turn this guy upside down, he becomes a locust from the pit. And then we're going to go back to the mother of exiles because she is the mother of all the locusts that go into the pit. Watch. Here we go. We turn this guy upside down now. And what do we have? Bibbity bobbity boop. There you go. You have a locust. There's the eye. There's the eye. There's the eye. There's the eye. Mandible, mandible, wing, wing. It's wearing a crown. The mouth becomes a crown. That becomes hair coming out. Those that this hair right here is movement of air under these wings. 
These are claws. That is a locust coming out of the pit. I love you in Christ. It's not up for discussion. It's not up for debate. That's a spiritual, supernatural gift. That's exactly what it is. Bam. Human in a slave collar. The end of the road, you become a locust from the pit. They get your energy. They transmute you. You are part of an alchemistic system. That's what this whole deal is all about. Let me show you a hieroglyph of Akhenaten and Nefertiti. Here you go. Here is this alien, the eye, eye, frowny mouth inside Akhenaten, and his his whole head and neck turns into a penis and a scrotum. Wow, that's no different than the Catholic Church penetrating a female vagina. Can someone help tell me how is that different than the largest altar in the world? The answer is there is no difference. It's just a different drawing. Okay, one's carved in rock, one's a big altar. Penis going into a vagina. Here's the female. She uh, Here's her hair. There's her eye. There's her mouth. There's the penis penetrating her vagina. She's on her knees. This leg goes out behind her body. This is her hip to her other knees and her legs going out right here there the kid that the that the pharaoh's holding his whole head is an egg and in the egg is a dead sheep there's the sheep's pink tongue i colored the whole sheep yellow there's the eye of the sheep well this right here i'll move this over i'll move this over enlarge it a little bit i'll show you it's a, there it is it's the same thing. So I'll move it over here. I'll color it a different color. See, these were the knees right here. There's the knee. There's the knee. I'll color it a different color. I'll turn it upside down, and I'll enlarge it. And it's a serpent-like human, which represents everybody's dad, the one that got everyone to apostatize. And look, he's eating his own child. Satan eats his own, guys. You think you're going to rule and reign with him, all you guys? No. Y'all, anyone that sold out, y'all are done. There it is. So here's the creature. Here's the creature. There's the eye, the eye, the nose, the open mouth, the tongue like a serpent going to the nose of the kid that's upside down. I'm sorry. In the upside down. And the kid is a dead sheep. And he's shoving his own kid into his mouth because the kid is a hybrid a hybrid is two different things in one system sheep and a reptile now y'all have seen the hieroglyph it's exactly perfect everything's matched up now everything look at it he's eating his own kid his kids an upside down dead sheep oh my gosh where have i seen that before Oh, that just happens to be the same thing as Quetzalcoatl. Oh, wow. You mean, yeah, the same darn thing as Quetzalcoatl. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. We have a common denominator, and it goes back to the Catholic Church as well. Kelepot. Citra Acra. The Statue of Liberty is standing atop a Kelepot, which is... In essence, the Citra Acra, the other side. That's how you break on through to the other side. There it is. Statue of Liberty is on top of the evil host body system, which is the Citra Acra, which is the everlasting chains housing holiness that Jesus bought us back from. Okay, now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in the corner. I'm going to breathe into my bag for a few hours. May start drinking alcohol today. <laughs> Not today. That's some heavy stuff, isn't it? Do y'all get it? Do y'all understand how profound this is? This is the mystery of all of it. It's... Told you, we await the adoption as sons, the redemption, ransom in full riddance of our body, slave body.
because your body's your your chains of darkness. And until you're ready to die in the flesh, you're not ready to be born of the spirit. Uh, if you're trying to hold on to your flesh and live, you're forget it. That's why the night I got saved, I had to be willing to die to walk out that door. I was like, you know what? I don't care if these guys shoot me in the alley. I want to know the truth. I got to know. Got to know. I got to follow this spirit, this spirit of truth. I've got to know. And so I was willing to open that door and die, man. Yes! Yes! <laughs> we got it. I think I'm going to have to watch Rush Hour 3. <laughs> oh. I'm going to look like the Joker for the next week. I think I'll get some red lipstick. <laughs> They're busted. We got them. Now I know. There, we're, there's no doubt I'm an end of the world harbinger. Duh. It's like, who could show you this insane crap? It's like, ah, who in the hell could show you this? It's like, nobody. Anyway, all, all glory to God. All glory to you. All glory to Jesus. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for having mercy on me. And you. Thank you for having mercy on everyone who will receive your truth. Amen. Receive you as the truth. Jesus is the truth. He's the truth. <laughs> so awesome. All right, guys. I just don't even know what to do with myself. I'm like, ah, this is like overwhelming to me. Okay, now I've digested it all. So now... What I'll do is I'm going to incorporate this into, look, here's the thing. Now we need to apply this. Look, let me show you something that that is really important. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, no. He's going to go off on another tangent. Watch this. Just sit tight. Take it easy. If you don't want to be here, turn off the video and go, go do something like, you know, that's worthless. <laughs> I mean, what could be more... What could be more important than this? Look at this. Watch this. This is so crazy. Oh, my gosh. Now this all makes sense. Look. Because, see, there's there's all these, you know, females. And, guys, I have nothing against females at all. I mean, you know, I mean, my, my whole younger life was like I lived for females. <laughs> it's like uh, that was the trap. So, look. Here we go. Let me show you something. That's why, okay, the largest altar in the world right here, that's a bug with a penis going in its mouth. That's why these young ladies have tattoos that are the same as the largest altar in the world. You see, because that's how they make more kelepots. That's how they, that's how the system works. I mean, the bugs in the pit, they only get more energy because of a penis going inside of a vagina, creating another host body. That's the only way they get their, that's the only way they, you know, get their energy. That's, I mean, so now look at these girls. Oh, see, look, she's got a, you know, she's got her cicada, but she's got a transmutation circle here. See, look. And see this girl, look in her transmutation circle. She's got the triple goddess right there in the middle. See it? Look. It all makes sense now. Why would these girls be doing this? Look at this. She's got the right side up, upside down. That's what's in the center of a transmutation circle, except the star that's in the very center of it. This one's got the, you know, the, the triple moon goddess. This one... This is really the face of a sheep with a bug, a praying mantis coming right out of the center of it. I mean, you know, this all makes sense now. I mean, my goodness, it all makes sense. Every tattoo, every image, all of it makes sense. Why would a girl have the same tattoo as the largest altar in the world that's a bug with a penis going in its mouth? That's crazy. 
but it all makes sense now. Praise God. Glory to God. All of it makes sense now, guys. The whole world makes sense now. This is phenomenal. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to try and put together a couple new folders where I take all the new data and I'm just slow it down a little bit. <laughs> I've been breathing in a bag. <laughs> it's just so exciting. It's like, dude, on planet Earth, we know the greatest mystery of all mysteries. The, we're all in serpent flesh, man. Oh, let me show you another picture. Watch this. We're all in serpent flesh. That's what's just so fascinating, so amazing. Let's see. I think I have a picture in here. I thought I added it. Nope. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, jeepers. There it is. This is human skin under magnification. This is human skin under magnification, guys. Right here. So here's serpent flesh, and here's human skin. This is human skin under magnification. Here's serpent flesh, human skin. Oh, wow. Yep, there it is. Human skin cells, serpent flesh. There you go. Yeah, I mean, this is no joke, man. This is this is solved. This is, this is resolved. There's no doubt about it. I've used all their own data against them. The Lord led me to every bit of it. It's totally understandable now. I mean, you know what? Let me grab this bottle of wine real quick. Watch this. I grabbed this a while back at the store because when I saw it, I was like, you got to be kidding. No. Well. Let me pause this. Okay, so when I saw this bottle of wine, I was like, you know, I had to get it just as a tool for learning. Look what it says. It says los dos, which means the two. But see, those are two intersecting circles making a vesica pisces. That's no different than the Under Armour logo. Look at the horns at the bottom. You see what I mean? So that's what makes the devil, the whole thing, is a dualistic system. That's what's so just, this is it. There's no arguing it anymore. I just showed you the largest halter in the world is male-female energy turning into a big dead sheep with a bunch of Elohim moving over the sperm. I mean, what, what could you possibly need? I mean, how much data do you need before you just go, wow, this guy's got like, he's got the secret formula to Coca-Cola. <laughs> That's like, dude. A friend of mine used to say, everybody thinks they got the secret formula to Coke. I actually do have the secret formula here to understanding everything. And there it is. And the Lord said everything would be made public. And you're looking at it. I'm making it public. Oh, I forgot to show you guys that one yesterday's video. I forgot to show you the dragon coming out of the sun. There it is. See the crescent moon? That represents the uterus, by the way. And that, by the way, listen, that's why all these Islamic states have the crescent moon and the star. That's the uterus birthing an angel. That's what it is. Once you know their symbology, everything makes sense. So here is here is the dragon coming right out of the sun. Let's see. There it is. See? And where is this flame going? That's going right to the, the crotch of the female. See, look. There it is. And that, 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 that. There you go. Yep. There it is. So here's a dragon coming right out of the sun. You know, that's the sun disk and that's the crescent moon. And so this is, you know, everything goes back, you know, to all these ancient cultures. It's all the same serpent creation stories because it's true. Well, it's true, but the Lord God's the one that cast them all out to make all this happen. He's the one driving the truck. They think they're driving, but they're not driving. Does that make sense now? Wow. Okay, I'm going to just like dial it down a couple notches because my brain is just... Yep, okay. 
Let's see, that's why some girl like this will have some crazy, crazy tattoo. And then when you look at when you turn that tattoo upside down, well, what is it really? What is this tattoo really? Well, it's a big death moth when you look at it right side up. It's a moth with like the, you know, Silence of the Lambs skull on the back because it represents, you know, uh, transmutation because, you know, moths go into a pupa stage and then they come out and there's something different. But when you turn it upside down, look what it is. This is a face. That's an eye. That's an eye. That's the open mouth. This is like death, like an alien wearing a crown. And then, and then underneath, you see the red, the roses. Those are those are eyes. These are eyes of a bug. That's eye, eye, and these are the mandibles right there. So the death, you know, this is a bug from the pit, guys. All you got to do is turn it upside down, and it has death wearing a crown, you know, and it's a bug with mandibles, and that's no different than you know this other stuff like. Remember the generic commercial? The right side up, this is a like a, it's a gin, you know, like a genie. But you turn it upside down, and it's the same bug with mandibles right here. See, look, what's the difference? It's a bug with mandibles, same thing. I see the same stuff on buildings. I mean, I see this stuff manifesting everywhere, guys. So, there it is. Okay, I'm going to breathe for a while in my brown bag over in the corner. <laughs> Just like... Okay, and then I'm going to take my time and I'm... I'll get our puppet show going. I have to sit here and lament for the world for a while. It's a double-edged sword. It's the greatest thing in the world knowing this. It's the worst thing in the world. <clears throat> With great knowledge comes great sorrow. There's no escaping it. To know the truth, yet yeah, knowing the truth is just, you have to carry your own cross. The truth is a cross. You have to carry it. But the good news is you don't have to carry it alone. That's why, you know, um, even on the, you know, last leg of Jesus carrying the cross, he had help. And we're going to need help to finish this. Because we're coming to the finish line, folks. It's coming. I guarantee it. All right. There it is mind-blowing by the way uh, this is a perfect representation of the all-seeing eye there's this like the sit this came from the citra akra that's what's coming through one eye of your everybody that's the all-seeing eye guys that's it that's what's up and when the pit opens up that that darkness that entity that evil is going to be released that's why it's going to be the worst horror the world's ever seen. Those are Jesus' words. He said it'll be the greatest horror the world has ever seen or will see. Because that is coming out on the surface of the whole, you know, the whole earth. It's going to be bad. Uh-huh. Mayan calendar makes sense now, too. Look. Mayan calendar, uh, everlasting chains of darkness, serpents opposite directions. And right here, it's two serpents with their, there's the eye, nose, open mouth. But you look at them together, it makes the devil with horns. There it is. I mean, I can do this now all day long, all day long. It's all the same, all of it. Hieroglyph 1300 BC, it's the same as the Mayan Quetzalcoatl feathered serpent. I mean, Vatican is the same thing as a uh, hieroglyph that's 1,300 BC. You know, they're all the same, every one of them, every bit of it. It's all the same. That's how you know you've arrived. All right, guys.